morning, everybody. Garlander here. Enzo's here. Nice catch. We're in the back of my bus. And uh, the beautiful new seating area that I just built. It's already dusty. But uh, if you want to see the technique that I used on the seats, it's a Shoshugi Bond technique, and I covered it in my last video. It's not very hard. Uh, it's a little bit time consuming because you're working with the wood a little bit longer. And uh, I think it's worth it. But there's a few things that we need to cover. And one of them being that bathroom area back there where you see that pillar standing up. That's going to be the set off the doorway. Bring you over there in a second. But I did some plywood on the ceiling. And something that I'm realizing in this bus is that electrical stuff in the ceiling is a pain in the ass. I'm going to have a plenum wall right behind the driver's seat there, kind of dividing the, the cab area with the living area. And that's going to be kind of a crucial spot. And that's going to be where the bathroom wall, wall will run into and the countertops will also run into that. So that's going to be the next thing I'm kind of tackling is putting that plenum wall up. And then I'll be able to start framing some of this other stuff in. But let's go check out what I got going on. So this is the pillar that's going to be one side of the doorway. So I was able to get, you know, from floor to ceiling in that one spot, which is a good thing. But where the next pillar is going to go, it lands right where the electrical box is. So I need to have my wall in plenum wall in so that when I run this wall off of it I have something sturdy to anchor to which is going to be that wall back there. Here we go getting a little dirty and we're getting the door jam done. So this is going to be pretty much the entrance to the bus area and uh, framing out a wall and a little doorway. So that way when you're looking at it from the cab area of the bus, it'll just be kind of a plain wall, mostly black with a door on it. And I wanted to show you guys before I covered up some of this stuff with sheeting, basically what's going on up above. And this is a metal track and metal stud system. And the cool thing about the track is that you can cut the flanges and it'll allow you to bend the track to kind of the shape of the whatever you're framing. So as you can see there, I got kind of a little bit of a curve going on. I was able to cut the flanges and bend it kind of where I needed it. Now this header right here is going to be for the, the top of the door. And all I did there is took another track and cut it again at the flanges and then kind of bent the piece up in like a boot fashion and then put some screws in to secure it. Uh, some questions that people might have for framing inside of a bus is where do I find plumb or straight up and down or how do I find level? You know, even though the bus is on a concrete surface right now, it is on jacks and it may not be level in here. So if you take a la took a laser in here, the floor is probably not level. Now, if you look at the bottom of my wall there, I got some waterproofing and then I waterproofed another line coming this way. And that is gonna be where I'm gonna set my wall for the bathroom. And I left this beam up to kinda help show you guys how you can find level and plumb. Now, what's really gonna matter is if you are square to the floor. So if you have a construction square, kind of like this one, which is a drywall square, we use this to cut the drywall, you can put it on the floor and then that'll give you a 90 degree angle going straight up and down. So if you circle around this beam with the square, you'll see that it's always 90 degrees to the floor. You can do the same thing with your studs over here at your wall and you basically you just prop it up and you can see everything's at 90. And once you once you have one stud set at 90, you should be able to go ahead and pull numbers off of that one stud 
and then if you pull the equal number on the bottom as to the top then everything that you pull from that stud should be 90. But as you can see I sheeted the front side of that wall and I just used plywood and stained it but uh, I'll probably trim it out much later. Uh, I pre-cut some of these two by twos and those are just gonna trim out on the inside of the wall so when you're looking at it from the side you're uh, you're gonna see wood not just a big hole or an un unfinished looking product as you can see my posts are kind of offset from my wall a little bit and the reason being for that is when I install my door it's gonna leave a flat surface for the door to butt up against and uh, having my door offset from the wall like that you got to have two areas for your door to kind of lay flush that'll give you a better seal you won't have as much water leaking because this is actually going to be the shower itself the door will swing in I also wanted to show you a little trick that I use to lay out the other beam location just basically wrap my other side with the t-square and I just draw my lines through and make my measurements. And then that's gonna show me where it intersects with the other wall. And that's gonna give me a more precise uh, door opening. I've got wall framed in from where the shower area and the living area are going to be separated and then um, this is going to be the entrance or the doorway and you'll be stepping right into the shower area the shower head will be up on the ceiling over there there'll be a drain in the floor here there'll be another piece of door frame on this side and as you can see, there's all this electrical, all these relays, right where I wanted to frame up my wall. Now initially my idea was to move it over into this space over here and screw, re-screw it into the ceiling, allowing me to run this wall framing all the way up. But that wasn't possible due to the wiring harness being pulled so tight, it didn't give me any space to clear. And I had to build the wall up in this fashion. And it's screwed into the framing of the bus there. One piece of stud, and then it's headed across here. Same type of header that I used in the door jam. And it's uh, just cut the flange and you just bend it over. <laughs> And uh, it comes over to this area. And then this piece of wood here is something I've been working on. You've probably seen it in the background of some of my previous videos. And it actually acts as a finished piece because the ceiling height is going to be up here. And this part of the wood will be exposed. And the other thing it's doing is it's adding structure to my wall. and it kicks it off, it makes it really, really strong. Now, what I need to do is I need to concentrate on building a box around this wire system. So my box will match the cutout of this wood 
and it'll transition across and then I will caulk everything into place and essentially everything inside of the bathroom here will be waterproofed and the outside over here will be exposed so if I ever need to access this area I'll be able to reach up over the top of this framing here and still get to those relays if I need to. So kind of tricky, some tricky stuff going on. guys we're back on the bus again and uh, now we got Enzo's bed back here so he's been hanging out back here while I've been working in there I did want to shoot out a warning that the end of uh, this video gets pretty messy so um, as you can see uh, I am using plywood in there and a lot of people don't like to use plywood in a bathroom area because um, of its durability in water and if you are going to use plywood which which I don't have a problem with doing but you have to keep in mind a couple of key things and that is the first thing that's going to go on the plywood is going to be the glue inside of the plywood so if you get uh, exterior board grade plywood it's going to have a much better glue holding those uh, slices of wood together and um, the other thing with plywood is that it finishes out nicely. You can put a stain on it, and then uh, if you if you do plan on showing it, which I am, um, there's going to be a process where you put polyurethane, and that's really going to protect it. But the key thing is uh, protect all the edges because that's where it's going to be susceptible to water. So that being said. Um, will get you to the messy part that I was talking about. And of course, that is when you're talking about caulking. And the first rule is always wear protection. So uh, let me get you in the bathroom. This is really where we are gonna unleash it. Now, you can see is I got dark boards and I got light boards. Um, no discriminating in here. Uh, the reason why is this wall is going to get covered and this wall is only partially going to get covered and you can see I started some of the caulking around the box and what you're going for is to create a seal all the way around your perimeter of your plywood you can see that that box looks really nice and Keep in mind guys, this is gonna go above the ceiling. So you're not even gonna see this um, unless I pull the ceiling panels down, which they will be removable in case I ever need to get into that bundle of wires right there. I have this single panel on the end that I can pop off. And like I showed before, I can access it from this side. All this stuff will be above ceiling as well. There'll be removable panels in this area. Now, if you saw in my drawing, there was a kraken on the back wall panel, and I plan on uh, etching that in to the stainless steel with some tools that I got, and maybe making a pretty cool looking piece of artwork and uh, adding that to the bus. But that'll be another episode. Yeah.